All right, we want to welcome you guys, and we're so happy that you can join us for our service, even if it is online. And I know that there's a lot of things that have been going on in this world, and in order to bring us back to the center, uh, let's turn to God. And as I read for us from Exodus 15:11, it says, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? And even now as we're speaking, I know that God is at work, but can we pray that God would be at work in our hearts, in our lives, uh, so that we can receive from him uh, what he wants to speak to us in today's service. So let's surrender ourselves and come to him in full submission as we lift up a prayer. Let's pray.
We come before you today, and firstly, we want to acknowledge that you are a faithful God. You are perfectly reliable and perfectly in control. As we prepare our hearts for worship, I ask that you search our hearts and reveal to us the things that grieve you, so that we can turn away from these things 
put our trust in the work that Jesus did on the cross, be transformed from the inside out and stand before you ready to worship with a heart that's pleasing to you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weakness, especially during this season of life when we feel like there is chaos in the world. Lord, we know that all this is in the palm of your hand. There is nothing that you do not see and nothing that you do not know. So we bring our weaknesses before you. Help us to be the light in this dark world. Help us to be different from our neighbors, that they would see your love flow through us and that they would want to know you more. Lord, we pray for the leaders of this nation and those you have placed in the position of authority. We pray that you guide them in wisdom and understanding. Reveal your will to our nation's leaders. We also want to lift up Pastor Mike to you as he gives us your word today. Speak through him as he preaches to us, and I pray that you would convict us and help us to live according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey everyone, and welcome to our All Nations Ministry Worship Service. We're so glad that you're here with us today, and even though it's not the same as meeting in church and hearing the word at church, I I really do hope that you're blessed by the service and that you would gain a better understanding of God's word today. So um, every week we've been sharing a question for the chat room, and this week I wanted to ask you guys, what have you been watching these days? I know that a lot of people have the streaming services, so if there's a documentary or a TV series, a movie that you would like to recommend, um, please let us know in the chat box. Um, And with that, if you are looking for something new to watch, please take this opportunity to um, take advantage of this awesome tool that we had. Pastor Sam mentioned it last week. But you can access Right Now Media for free. Um, You just need to text Right Now IOC to 41411. Um, It's a free tool. It's awesome. Um, I took a look at it. And if you want marriage resources, parenting resources, um, if you are sick of having the kids watch junk on TV. There's really great videos for your children as well. So please take advantage of that. And for the A&M family, um, please continue to give your offering online. Um, there's other ways to give as well, and you can click the link below um, to check how else you can give. Um, with that, um, let's turn to our Bibles. Pastor Mike will be giving us a sermon um, from the series Road to Redemption. We'll turn to Exodus chapter 1. Verse 8 to 22. Now there rose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities, Python and Ramesses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves." Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shephra and the other Pua, when you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them in the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and let the male children live? The midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. The Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews, you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live." Please welcome Pastor Mike as he comes up to preach the sermon titled, God's Not Absent. All right, thank you, uh, Sister Unji. And uh, you may not notice, but uh, she was deathly afraid of sharing in front of people. But I guess since the room is empty, this has been a a good bridge for her to get used to um, 
communicating and becoming more confident, and let's encourage her. So if in the chat box, just let her know that you like her accent or you're just so encouraged by the things that she shared, I'm sure that would really help and uh, boost her confidence. Um, and so, yes, uh, thank you for joining us. And before we begin, uh, I just want uh, us to just bow in a word of prayer one more time. Uh, Father, we just are so grateful, um, Lord, that we are given the space and the opportunity to worship. And we ask, Lord, that though we may be in the comforts of our home, uh, God, but we pray that uh, may we continue to lift up prayers, Father, for the opening of the church. We pray, God, for a vaccine. Uh, we pray, God, that you would help with all the turmoil uh, that's going on in this world. We thank you that you are sovereign, that you know uh, better than what we know. And Father, that the solution may not look like what we uh, expect, but we know, Lord, that you are working, that you are moving. And so we just pray that today's passage would provide and shed light and that we can be able to absorb, God, your truths and your promises that are being fulfilled uh, in front of our eyes. And so we lift these things to you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, you know, there was a, a story that I once heard that was circulating, talking about uh, Cherokee Indian youth and how they enter into adulthood. And in order for them to be considered a man, they would have to endure what is called the rite of passage. Uh, they'd have to go through this event in their life that would change them and help them to accept uh, this next stage of life of entering into adulthood. And what they would do is the father would blindfold their son and take him out, and then he would leave him alone. And the, the youth is required to sit on this tree stump uh, the entire night. He can't remove the blindfold until the morning sun shines through it. And while he's there, he cannot cry for help. Uh, he has to be silent. And once he survives that, then he's considered a man. Uh, he can't tell any of, any of his friends what happened or his experience, um, but every boy has to endure this in order to uh, become a, enter into manhood on his own. So think about it. The boy would be naturally terrified. You know? I'm sure he's hearing all sorts of noises as he's sitting there all alone on this tree stump in the middle of a forest. You know, it's one thing to be in the middle of a forest to be able to defend yourself, but here he is by himself, and also on top of that, uh, he has something covering his eyes. And there's all these sounds, and I'm sure that it's creating terror um, in his heart. But while all this is going on, he has to sit stoically, uh, resting and trusting that he will get through the night. And finally, when the, the horrible night is over and the sun uh, comes in through his, his blinders and he's able to remove the blindfold, guess what he sees? He discovers that he is not alone. His father is actually sitting nearby, watching over him, protecting him, making sure that no harm befalls upon him. Uh, even though this story may be a legend, um, but I felt like there was some truth to this, and I did feel like it connected and maybe perhaps helps us to understand what exactly is going on here in the story of Exodus. If you have your Bibles or your Bible app, I'm sure you guys turn to it in, in chapter 1. And we see that, uh, that even though some of us, we, we may feel like we're alone, uh, even though we're being surrounded by different things like doubt, uh, anger, abuse. Maybe some of you are going through financial difficulties or job security, broken relationships, betrayal. We forget that God is actually there right next to us, even through all that we go, go through. Uh, and that's where we find ourselves in Exodus chapter 1, uh, verses 8 to 22. And the first thing that I want to point out to us is that God turns affliction into accomplishing his plans. Okay? God turns affliction into accomplishing his plans. 
You know, the story of Exodus, it's a very interesting book. And it's a story about the journey of the Israelites on this road to redemption. You know, most good stories, you know, it requires there, there be some sort of conflict or hardship uh, that the character has to endure. He has to go through it. And this is the part of the development of the character. And this is a way for people to, to connect with them, that they can identify with that person and be like, oh, I, I understand what they're going through. You know, if you are a fan of, of superhero movies and you've all seen the, the main character, he has, they, they go through some, some difficulty or trials in their life. Or maybe it's a loss you know, of a loved one. Someone was murdered. Or maybe there was tragedy or loss. Or maybe they were an orphan or they had to deal with grief. The Bible is filled with those kind of characters. You will see time and time again uh, people who have gone through such heartache and you wonder how anyone can survive. But these all play a role in terms of shaping and creating the type of people that they will become later on in life. And the Israelites, they're no different, you know. Uh, God has a plan, and he has a road map, and he wants to help them navigate through that, but they have to learn to look to him and trust him in this process as they go through trials. You know, the people of Israel, they were probably enjoying, you know, a very prosperous time up until now. You know, while they were under uh, the authority and the rule of Joseph, they were, you know, getting all this favor from the Egyptians. But all that comes to an abrupt end with this new pharaoh that comes into power and he has no regard for, this Isra for the Israelites that are living amongst them. So the story of Pharaoh, it plays a role in the development of these Israelites. Uh, if you look at verse 9, it says, And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. And Pharaoh, he recognizes the number and the strength that these Israelites possessed. And he was afraid of them. He thought and he was wondering, maybe they can get bigger and stronger and overtake them um, if, they, if he allows them, if he doesn't do anything to restrict them. Uh, and so Pharaoh comes up with this plan to keep the Israelites under control and under his authority. What does he do? And if this were up to, if this were just between Pharaoh and the Israelites, Pharaoh would have clearly won. Uh, he would have had come up with the right game plan and he would have done the right thing by exercising his authority. But because this battle included God, it changes everything. Nothing here is what it seems. And we see Pharaoh's plan in verse 11 as he sets taskmasters over them. You know, the sole purpose of these taskmasters uh, was to afflict and to oppress uh, the poor and defenseless people, the Israelites. And they were just there causing grief, causing them to work harder, longer, uh, and making things more difficult for them. You know, as I was reading and studying this text over and over again, um, I started feeling very uncomfortable uh, when, I, when I read these words. And I realized that this text actually helped shed some light on what's going on in the world today. You know, it taught me that when I, when I would read this text before, I used to think to myself, oh, this is a story in the Bible. This took place, you know, centuries ago. This has nothing to do with me today. Uh, but then as I wrestled with this and as I was listening, as I was observing about what's been going on, uh, in society today, you know, just around the corner of our church, uh, there is a police station. And you know, I drove by and I saw all these protesters, all these people with signs saying that black lives matter. And it made me, it helped me to understand, wow, this is the kind of oppression and affliction that people, the African American people were enduring here, right on our own soil. And as I was seeing that, as I heard their cries, as I heard their pain, 
as I, as it caused me also to, to grieve and to process the anger and wanting justice to be pronounced. It helped me to understand what these Israelites were going through. It helped me to bring to light that they too were going through the same thing. And as I saw these you know, hundreds of people gathering together on the front lawn of the police station, crying for justice for a man who was innocent, I also thought to myself, do I feel the same way about what happened and how they treated our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do I have that same passion, that same drive for justice, just as these people are crying out for people like George Floyd? Do we understand what Jesus went through as well? All these afflictions served a purpose for accomplishing God's plans. And I don't know what that may look like, but I do know that God is at work. And despite Pharaoh's plan to afflict and to oppress the Israelites, we see in verse 12, the more they oppressed, what happens is that the more they multiplied. Pharaoh wanted less, but God wanted more. And Moses wants us to see that God's mandate from Genesis was to be fruitful and multiply. And that's being carried over. That no matter what Pharaoh tried to do, no matter how evil his schemes are, it will not thwart what God was going to do. His promises are being fulfilled. That no matter how hard he tried, man can, does not stand a chance going up against God. And so what these Israelites were going through, God would send Moses to deliver them. God redeems us from our cruel afflictions of sin through the great deliverer named Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, but the second thing that we see here as well is fear of God that leads to courage. Okay? Fear of God that leads to courage. And we see that in verse 17. You know, Pharaoh's plan was ruthless and it didn't work. And instead of decreasing the size of the Israelites, you know, they began to prosper and they began growing like crazy. Pharaoh had to come up with plan B. He changes his plans. And he doesn't realize who he's going up against. And he devises a plan. He's going to control the population of these Israelites. And what does that plan entail? He decides he's going to kill all the, the Hebrew male babies. Now, let that sink in for a moment. He orders the killing of male babies. This is genocide. You know, I don't know how he can sleep at night making this order, calling for the execution of infant babies. You know, I've met with parents who've lost their infant child, and the grief that they are going through, the, the, the turmoil, and all the, the depression that gets mixed in over the loss of a child. This is what the Pharaoh had mandated. This is what he had called for. It is pure evil. And this reveals to us the heart and the person, the type of person that Pharaoh was to even think about doing such a thing. And on top of that, he orders the Hebrew midwives to carry out his plans. This plan does not make sense. First of all, you're asking someone of their own kind, someone of their own race to kill their own people. And secondly, he's asking a woman to carry out his evil deeds. You know, women are known as givers of life. Who in their right mind would want to take away a life, especially of a child? And he only wanted the male babies to be killed because he knew that the, he felt like the women babies were, didn't have the strength or they can be sold or they can be trafficked or they can be used as slaves. And that they will be subservient to a greater power like Pharaoh. Pharaoh wanted these women who were life givers to become murderers. And even though Pharaoh orders the killing of all these babies, 
we see two women who stand up and they defy his order. And these women who are courageous enough to stand up to Pharaoh, the most powerful person in Egypt, they didn't care. You know, not only do women have a higher tolerance of pain, but in my opinion, women can be more courageous than even men. Can I get a witness? And if you look at the courage that these women possessed, I'm sure that it didn't just suddenly appear. When it says that they feared God, uh, that meant that they were more afraid of displeasing God because to them, God was their entire universe. God meant the world to them. God was their source of, of security and of love. They would not dare offend or do anything against their God. Uh, you know, there's a quote from uh, Martin Luther King from his book, Strength to Love. It says, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The true neighbor will risk his position, his prestige, and even his life for the welfare of others. I feel like this is a perfect example of what these women were willing to do, what they were willing to take on, that they were going outside of, of their normal routine, and they stood up to Pharaoh. They defied him in his face, but they didn't care because they cared more about what God wanted. And I believe that these two women here, Shapira and Pua, these women feared God. And because of their fear of God, it gave them the courage to do what was right. Even if that meant going to prison, even if that meant that they would be killed, they wanted to do what would honor and please God. And it reminds me of, of the story in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Three men who stood for what, what honors God, that they refused to give in to the king's orders. And even if that meant them being killed, being thrown into the furnace, they were willing to do that just so that God can be honored. They allowed this. And because they fear God, these two women, I believe God gave them the wisdom in their reply to Pharaoh by giving him an answer that allowed them to dodge this bullet. And as a result of their fear and of their obedience to God, we are told in verse 21 that they were blessed and given families. Now some of you might be wondering, you know, what does that mean? Well, a lot of these midwives... They were chosen because most of them were barren at that time. They, were not allowed, they uh, could not conceive a child. And because of their situation, they helped other people, other women, give birth. And God saw what was going on in their lives. And so God blessed them and gave them families of their own. And the last thing that we see in this passage is that God is not absent. God is not absent. And this is the title of today's sermon. And as this whole narrative is unfolding, what's interesting is that we don't see any mention of God until verse 17. You know, some people might be wondering, where, where was God when the Israelites were being treated as slaves, when they were thrown into uh, the oppression and the affliction of, of Pharaoh? Where was God when uh, Pharaoh mandated that these babies be killed? Where is God in all that's been going on? God seems silent. And the atheists, they will tell us that the reason why God seems silent is because he's absent. There is no one home at that address. But we should not fall into that trap of thinking that when God is silent, that it means that he's absent. Never think like that. We should stop, from, stop ourselves from falling into that trap. Because when you look back, you will see that God was present in your journey. You know, all throughout the Bible, 
we see people crying out to God, complaining that where, where was he in the midst of their pain, in the midst of everything that they were going through? You know, if you look at the life of Job, uh, when he was going through that suffering, when he lost his family members, when he felt rejected, when you look at King David, who was running for his life against King Saul, the man that he served, or when he's on the run against, because his own son was trying to kill him. Where was God when they needed him most? Just because you may not hear him doesn't mean that he doesn't hear you. Just because you don't feel his presence doesn't mean that he's not with you. And this is what I want us to remember. That God is not absent in your life. Because you may not hear him, he hears you. Just because you may not see him, he is near you. The only time that God was silent was when Jesus hung on that cross. The weight of sin on his shoulder. And he bore the wrath of God, which is why God could not answer his cry for help. And as I invite the praise team to come up, you need to know and hear this. God will not leave you alone with your struggles. Inactivity is never apathy when it comes to God. He is fulfilling his purpose in your life. You may not see it now, but he will reveal it to you at the right moment. When you feel like God is silent in your life right now, do what Jesus did. Lie still, stay silent, and trust God. Jesus died with this conviction. And he said, For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. God is not absent in what is going on in this world today. Be confident in knowing that. That just as God was with these Israelites in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their struggles, God will reveal himself in a powerful way. Let's do our part by trusting in him and turning to his word, turning to him in prayer. Can we do that? Can we respond by submitting to him? Can we respond by trusting that God has a better plan than what we have? Oh 
That is who 
that is who you are and that is who you are and that is who you are let's pray father we just thank you lord that this song perfectly describes how you are working father that through our physical eyes, we may not see it, but God, that you are definitely for us, that you're working by our side. And just as you've been helping these Israelites, that through it all, that all this was happening so that they can accomplish your plans. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are a small piece of the puzzle and that our lives are important, that you have purpose for us and that you've created us and you want us to understand that. But though we may have questions, though we may have doubts, uh, God, we pray that you will continue, Lord, to send us your assurance. Remind us, oh God, of how your presence has gone before us and that you have already made the way for us to follow. Thank you, Lord, for your son that gives us the opportunity to partner with you in your master plan. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus that gives us purpose and courage, may the love of our Heavenly Father that fulfills all of our needs, the fellowship, resurrection power, unifying, peace-seeking healing of the Holy Spirit be upon all God's people, both now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, we hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. And let's continue praying that we will be together very, very soon. Uh, God bless, and we'll see you soon.